Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, today, I'm going to give you a little rundown of uh, what I did to make uh, this beat. Probably, I think it was the second or third video I uploaded. Uh, this one. Got that Spanish guitar in there, you know, simple drums, pretty simple. But uh, the chops are actually kind of complicated, and uh, I figure I'll show you exactly what I did to get these chops going, and uh, maybe it'll help you out in your own beat ventures. So... Uh, I'll just start over from scratch on the chops real quick, give you a little taste. What I did, I sampled this uh, classic guitar video here on YouTube. Um, you can hear it. So you can kind of hear what I took from. There's a kind of weird looking John Lovett's face there. but uh, So what I did was, uh, I have all my stuff rigged up to... Uh, to record whatever I hear. So I recorded straight from YouTube here, which some people might advise against, but uh, you know, it doesn't really matter so much. So, I mean, all I did was I just started a machine, queued up that YouTube, let it play a little bit. I already listened to it a couple times. I knew what I wanted to use. And uh, I think I grabbed about 20 seconds of audio. So I'll let that play out. Yeah, because <laughs> the guy starts singing and we can't have that, so. All right, so to start out, uh, we got the sample in here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did right off the bat was I lowered the pitch some, so it's, all right, and I like, what I liked was those intro notes. So I popped all those up here You know, you just chopped out. Uh, for this particular beat, I used uh, one shots. In this case, uh, when you have little short chunks, because it's not really a big deal to have it playing over, and it's easier instead of having to hold down the pad. Um, so let me set all those to one shots real quick. All right, see, they all play over each other, which is a problem. So what I do is I uh, is I set a uh, a dummy pad that is nothing. Is it make it as short as can be, and you go and you set the uh, group polyphony down to one, so you can only play one at a time, and if one's playing, you can silence it with this pad right here. So. That's what I do, that's what I used to do a lot. Now, I do some other stuff that I'll show you in another tutorial, but for samples like this, uh, you want this mute pad here, you want polyphony to one. Uh, so I just went through and I just, I did these little individual notes here, uh, which I use in the intro, so. And you want to make sure that when you're uh, chopping these samples that uh, where you chop lines up. If you zoom in real close, you see uh, you want it to hit on where it crosses so there's no popping. And same for the end too. So where that wave crosses, you want it to. Okay, so I've got those parts. Um, and I just went through. And chopped up all the stuff I thought would be useful in the beat. And, uh, you know, I just went through lots of. Just basically any chord hit, any single note that sounded interesting to me. And so, I'm not gonna do that again right now because I already did it, but. I ended up with 15 samples and my mute pad here, so I had 15 chops that I made. And uh, in the final beat, there's some effects on there, but I'm gonna leave those off for now. So you just have the, you just have a bunch of different chords and shit. So at this point, I just play around with what I have. Maybe uh, listen to the original beat, see what I liked. Wanted to extend, you know, 
what I wanted to change up. Um, so here, I know I wanted to use this. So, and then I, and then in the, in the original sample it goes, and then it just keeps going. But I, I like this, so I figured out how to loop that with some crafty chops. Um, so you just have to get creative. I mean, it's all about finding out what you need to do and how you need to do it. I mean, it's just problem solving. So what I ended up with for the first for the first pattern was. I mean, so that's the first pattern I came up with. So, I mean, I recorded that, quantized it. Uh, this in parts here, triplets. So I had to quantize that separately, which is not hard to do. I mean, you can just select just the part you want to quantize and change the grid to, to triplets. And yeah, so uh, that wasn't a big deal. And so then I laid down, you know, this pattern. I just let that loop for a while, and then I found uh, some drums I wanted, one of the stock kits, a couple things changed out, and then I ended up laying this down. Yeah. And then I did some bass too. And I mean, a lot of people ask, um, how do you figure out how to play your bass line? And I mean, what I do basically is I just, listen and I start humming something I either hear it in my head or I start humming something and then I go over to the keyboard figure out what it is I'm gonna play figure out the notes I'm hearing um, sometimes you'll have to tweak the tunings on either the sample or your bass sometimes if it's you got a vinyl sample it, it'll be like uh, you know like 15 20 cents off and that's like the gnarliest it can be I mean because that's in between all the keys on the keyboard so you got to fix that shit yourself but I mean, and then the drum's pretty straightforward, just, just played that, quantized, you got the swing on there, I mean, it's what I played, it's just, I like to have uh, everything perfect, just because that's the way I am, and it'll drive me crazy if it's not, so, I mean, drums, bass is pretty minimalist, it's just, and then pause, a dramatic pause, and then, and then it syncs up with the sample here at the end, as do the bass, the bass drum in the, in the kit, but I mean, it's pretty simple, so, it's just, the, the technical process is, is not really the hard part, it's just using your creativity and your uh, musical intuition to put it all together in a fun, pleasing way, I mean, and then I ended up throwing these effects on the guitar because I thought it sounded better. I'm going to end up with. Got a little bit of reverb. And uh, the grain delay, which I'm still not entirely sure what's happening. But it, I like the sound of it. So. Yeah, I mean. That's this one so far. So. This was my first one, so cut me some slack. Might not be the greatest, but I'll get there. Basically, what you need to know from this one is uh, setting group polyphony to one, uh, having your choke dummy pad here, and then also on each individual sample, make sure you set the uh, pol the where is it the polyphony. Well. You only need to set, I mean, if your group polyphony is one, you don't really have to worry about anything else, which makes it real nice. So you don't have to worry about choke groups, you don't have to worry about individual polyphony. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So hope that helped somebody somewhere.